Hi there, I'm Kira and this is Polymer Clay TV and today I'm going to show you how to turn this faux bone slab and this cutter into a really fun brooch pin. Let's get started. Now I have some Sculpey Primo granite and this is a piece of clay that I didn't make a whole bunch of this because I tend to work small and just want to make one project at a time. So this is not really enough to do what I want. I mean, it is big enough to cut out the bird, but that's not the point. I want the bird to be kind of puffy. So I'm gonna back it with a piece of this to make this a more substantial piece of clay. And then I also have some copper simple sheets. This is like a leafing product that is stuck to the paper. And I'll show you how that's gonna work because I'm gonna do like a faux metallic frame for the piece. So first I'm going to condition this a little bit. That just means to get it moving. And I like to start with my rod before it goes into my pasta machine. Now I just need enough of this to be able to work with this. So they're going to go sandwiched on top of each other and get a little roll to stick them together. Okay, now I've switched out my tile so that I could work on a smaller tile that can go directly into the oven. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this here. And it's best for this technique if we are lightly attaching it to the tile so that it doesn't roll around or move. Now the deli wrap here is so that I can make this bird beveled. And I'm going to go ahead and press through the deli wrap, through the two layers of clay, and I'm gonna use my acrylic block to aid me with that process so that I get nice, even pressure on the whole bird. I can see that I didn't quite press hard enough on the tail end, so let's try that again. Okay. And now that I have the bevel, I can come back and just make sure that the cutter goes all the way through to the tile. This process can be a little tricky, so be patient with yourself, especially if your clay is pretty thick. And now, because I have tools to help me, I'll just get into these tiny areas and do a little cleanup. This doesn't matter so much because of what I'm going to do next, but I wanted you to see it's better to clean up your clay as much as possible before it goes in the oven and make sure that everything really looks the way you want it to look prior to going to the next step. So now I'm going to go ahead and take some of this clay because scrap is always useful and I'm going to roll this into a snake. I don't even much care that it's all mixed together because of what I'm going to do with it. So I'm going to put this over here to the side. This is just a silicone baking mat that I use when I'm filming. So that's a tip for you because it's not shiny and it helps things to not move around a lot. And I'm going to move this like this because I actually have a nice butcher block underneath so I can roll this snake out. Once you have what you need there, which is a piece of clay that's going to go all the way around the bird, we can use the simple sheets and just put some leaf onto this clay. So I'm just trying to make 
a rope of clay that pretty much has the copper on the outside edge of it. I don't really want to cover the whole thing. Because of what I'm going to do next. Just kind of trying to cover the top. If I didn't care, I would just kind of roll it in it, but this actually does need to stick to my clay as a frame and an edging. So I do care that I leave some of the clay exposed. Now part of my master plan for this bird is to make it look a little bit like Scrimshaw. So I'm gonna use some archival ink and this is from the Sparkles and Spiral Texture Tips. And I'm going to actually put a little flower here, a little flower with texture. I'm gonna use my special sticky mat to get the ink off of the stamp for the most part so that I can use another one. And then let's see what else I might want to use. I brought some other tools out to just make marks. So I have these silicone tip things. Now, of course, you could do the antiquing or wipe off technique afterwards if you want to. But I kind of feel like just mark making on the bird now would be a lot of fun and it'll be a little bit less um, predictable how it comes out later because as I stamp the ink is kind of running out and I like it I like how it's not perfect and this is gonna just bake right in which will be real nice So just have fun with this part. These archival inks by Ranger are good for this process. They'll work well. This silicone tip has a kind of cupped edge to it. So let's see how that looks. It's kind of a, got a bend to it, which might look cool for something like feathery parts on the wings here. And the ink itself is not exactly black. It does look black but it's more of a charcoal so I definitely like how that's coming out and of course these are ball stylus tips so we can give our little bird an eye I'm just going to find one that's an appropriate size I don't want it to be too big and just dip that in the ink a little bit and give him a little eyeball there we go now another thing that we can do see I love doing these and just winging it is maybe attach a couple of aluminum cabochons in here while the clay is not cured yet. So these are hot fix on the back and sort of colorful on the front. This is a little tray where if you go back and forth a little bit, it'll flip a lot of them over so that you can use something like this. This is my crystal catcher to go ahead and pick them up and place them where you want them. So I'm really thinking the middle of the flowers. And maybe just a couple other spots like here on the tail. Oops, that one flipped over. Let's fix it. 
I'm looking for ones that aren't super brightly colored. That's not what I want to do with this design. Looking for the ones that are kind of coppery colored, dark. Okay, and then once you find what you're looking for, you'll want to flip over that tool and just give them a good press so that they make contact because the glue on the back of them is going to glue itself to the clay during the baking process. So you want to make sure that they're touching really well. Right, and then this tool is convenient for pouring everything back in the jar. And let's make the edging. So for that, I'm going to take my snake that I already made that has the color on it. And I'm going to start here. And I'm going to butt it up against the clay and press. And in these spots where my hand is just a little too big, I'm going to go ahead and use a tool to help me. And here, I might even cut this off because it'll be just a lot of bulk and too much. So I'll just go ahead and press that down. And we can always add more gold leaf if necessary to get the look that you want. This is really what tools are for, to reach areas that your hands can't reach. help you with things that your hands are not so great at doing. And here, by his beak, I might use my fingers to squeeze and create a little beak because I'm covering up the sharp little pointed beak of the cutter. And then in here again, I'll cut this off at an angle and use my tool to encourage this clay to go down into the crack area and fill it in. And now I wanna make sure I'm making really good contact with the bird. And the reason that I use the same colors as the base of my sculpted bird is so that any places where that copper is not completely covering, it's not gonna be a totally different color and throw off the design. I have a little piece of leaf that escaped and wanted to go onto the bone, so we're gonna scrape that off because I want you to remember that what goes into the oven is what's gonna come out of the oven. So you wanna to try to get your piece looking great before you bake it so that you have less cleanup and work to do after the bake. I'm just pointing some of these edges that came out curved because of the way I sculpted it. And now I'm going to grab that piece of leafing and just see if there are any other areas that I kind of want to fill in. And I can even do that with this tool because it's a waxy and I've got my simple sheets leaf in case there are any areas that I want to kind of patch. So I'm going to use my silicone tool because it's sort of sticky and just patch some of these areas that didn't quite get the leafing that I wish they had. It's almost like a brush. In fact, they call this a silicone paintbrush. 
See, there's a big section over here that didn't have copper on it, so we'll fix that. And I'm gonna be okay with it not being perfect because of what I'm gonna do next. But I do wanna just make an effort in some of these areas. Especially maybe, see how I got a pointed piece here? Maybe right in here where this all comes together. And you see how I'm kind of rolling and pressing at the same time. And that will help the leaf to get in there and stick. And as you can see, it's not always perfect, so don't get frustrated, just work on it till it sticks. All right, now I'm gonna find the largest ball stylus end, which is on this one. And I'm going to do this and give it some look of hammered metal. And this is gonna do two things. I'm gonna to press toward the bird. So it's going to further attach this to the base so it doesn't fall apart after baking. It's going to give a little bit of a hammered metal look. It's gonna attach the metal leaf to it a little bit better. It's gonna break up the pattern so that it doesn't just look like metal leaf stuck on clay. I really love doing this kind of texture because I think it accomplishes several things at once. It helps me create attachment. It helps me create a little bit of interest, visual interest, breaks up the surface a little bit distracts you from things that aren't perfect. And it also gets rid of things like fingerprints. It's like a very multiple good use technique. Helps me fix things that aren't correct right now, like shoving more clay into that area here and also over here, which I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these that's a little smaller to be able to push more clay down into this corner. And as I'm doing this, I'll see other areas too that maybe aren't perfect with the gold leaf so I can come back and add some. This is the time to refine and make, make sure everything really looks the way you want it to look. And there are several tips here. This chisel tip happens to be one of my favorites for this process of just going in and fixing shapes, making it beveled on the bottom, making sure that these points are really pointing in making sure there's nothing weird happening underneath with like bits and pieces of clay poking out. It helps to straighten out edges. This is a good tool for when you've made cuts with a cutter and you need to clean up the edges. Isn't that looking pretty? So now we're gonna go ahead and bake. Here we are with this beautiful birdie finished. She's still attached to the tile. And now we need to back it and put on the pin. So I'm gonna keep this scrap because I think that I can make two earrings out of the pieces here. But normally I might just ball this up and create a backing. Or you could take some of the clay 
Yeah, it just, it doesn't matter which way you decide to do it, but I am gonna put a back on the piece. So I rolled out some of my granite clay to a number three, and I'm gonna do one more thing here to get it ready to put on the back of this. I'm gonna take some of my green texturing sponge and roll it through my pasta machine. Just like this, sandwiched on my number one setting. Okay, what that does is it gives me a little texture to work with and then I'll finish it off on the actual piece. Let's come back down here. Now you have some choices when you are doing metal on the back of your clay and there's all kinds of little findings you can buy if you wanted to make a sort of clip style barrette. This is a French barrette where it pops open to catch your hair. And then of course, I'm gonna turn it into a brooch. So I bought these. And the way these come is with this um, backing here. And I don't, I don't want this. I couldn't find the ones that were just metal. So we're gonna take this off. And if possible, I would pry this piece off as well. Okay, so off camera, just in case I <laughs> hurt myself, which I didn't, I just used my X-Acto blade and got in there and scraped off the nubs on the inside of this plastic piece and it popped right out. So now we have the metal. So let me show you what we're gonna do with that. We're gonna pop the bird off the tile. And you see that we have a kind of messy back. So we're going to go ahead and back it with a sheet of this clay. Press it on there really well. Right, and then we're gonna go ahead and use our blade to just gently cut around the bird. Set this clay aside. I did keep one scrap here intact. You'll see what that's for in a minute. And I'm just gonna use this sponge now to press all around the edges of this piece to kind of round them off and make sure that I'm making good contact and there's nothing sharp, no sharp edges here. So rather than using my finger to press it down, which would leave fingerprints, I'm using my texture sponge. And then wherever my hands were touching, I can just put that on there again. And now we need to affix the actual pin back. So we have our bird and we have to decide, do you want her to, to fly upwards, downwards, straight across? Which direction do you want this to sit when the person is wearing it? And I think I like it kind of going down. So I, that means I'm gonna put the pin across Back here, instead of just straight across, I'm gonna put it more sideways like this. So I'm gonna press this here, and then I have saved a piece of clay that I cut a little bit thicker. I didn't roll it out real thin, and I think this is a number two on my pasta machine. And I'm going to bevel down this edge 
and cut off a piece here. Whoops. Might even go sideways with it since I do have a lot. Yeah, let's do that instead. Okay, because I want to cover up that space. So I'm going to bevel the edges down now. And then put this right over that metal. And again, use my sponge to really press it down on there, which will give it texture instead of fingerprints. Always remember that clay to clay is the best bond you can make. Embedding things in the clay, anytime you use glue, you're setting yourself up for potential failure down the road when the glue sits on the clay and eats through it or isn't compatible or something slides off or it creates a crack. That's why glue is not always the best way to attach things. And if you can do this clay to clay connection, it's always gonna be the best. So now we've got the pin part embedded in there and we're going to pay attention and be sure, see this? The back side of the pin has this little spring on it and we don't want to prevent it from closing. So I'm gonna go ahead while we're still not baked and make that little indentation where it needs to come down so that later when I'm wearing the pin, it doesn't not wanna close. So always pay attention to the moving mechanical parts. Make sure that this can freely spin around over here because that's what closes the pin. And that whatever you put here to hold it on is not so thick that the pin itself can't close at all. So you wanna make sure that you still have some good space there to close, close up the pin. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it open while baking. I feel confident that there's enough room back here now for the little spring to come down. And this just goes in for one more bake. Really fun. I hope that you enjoyed this project and that you'll come back next week for some more Polymer Clay TV.